to be English. Um, what's your experience of this, uh, Natalia? Uh, what do you think? Let's start up. If you said, if somebody says they are English, what do you think of? Try to write. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think of when somebody says they are English? What did, what characteristics uh, do you think of? We're going to look at them, but it's first it's good to ask uh, ask you, ask any students in the class. Mm -hmm. Okay, so culture, films, yeah, that's a good point. Um, a lot of people around the world get uh, get their view of the English people from culture and films, for example, yeah, okay, that's fine. And what do you get from this... Uh, from these things, what uh, what view of English people or Englishness do you get? Yes, cultures so and literature as well. Mm -hmm. and just maybe we can move at it here because it's it's relevant. Yeah, literature as well. Mm -hmm. You know, some films, very famous films, uh, portray a, a, a version of Englishness that uh, it's almost like a stereotype, but. Uh, people think, oh, that's how English people are. Uh, one film I'm thinking of straight away is Love Actually. Uh, this is an, uh, an English film. And it gives the view of English people as rather nervous and uh, complicated people. I think for me it's quite uh, quite close to reality. So, T. Yusuf is here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're talking about Englishness. What what does it mean to be English? If you'd like to to speak on the microphone, you can. Just remember that this lesson is recorded, and maybe uh, maybe we'll go on to YouTube and or other platforms. So, what we're doing here is recorded. Should should have said that. Uh, at the beginning. Also, other people on the course can uh, watch this lesson back and download the recording. Englishness. So let's have a look at my uh, uh, my words connected with Englishness. I've got forty uh, words here. Let's have a look at them. Uh, at some of them. Have a look at the words. Tell me if there are any new words that you don't know, and then we can start with those. I think the first line is really crucial to understanding English people. This first line. Privacy, class, manners, and shame. 
These are big issues for, for us, for English people. Uh, we love to have privacy. You know the expression, uh, an Englishman's home is his castle. Yeah, this is absolutely true. When we close our door, we want to be quiet, have complete privacy. We don't want to hear any neighbours, even dogs barking. We want to just imagine we are we're in our castle, far away from other people. Of course, this is a stereotype as well. Not every person it matches every characteristic. Tutting, is number 21 is tutting. Tutting is something we do like this. Now, if you're standing in a queue and somebody pushes in front of you, probably a foreign person, because an English person would be too embarrassed to do that, generally, we might hit, we might do this tutting. Tutting. <laughs> tutting is something we can do instead of speaking, instead of being direct. English people are not, not direct. We, we like a, a, an iceberg. There's a little bit coming out on the surface and a lot underneath the surface. A lot going on. Okay, any other new words here? When I've done this lesson here in Poland where I, where I teach, uh, we talk about class. Uh, number two is class. It, English people know their class. We know which class we are. We can be either working class, uh, lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class, upper class, and then after that you are either royalty or just very, very rich. So, what about in your country? Do you have class? Do you have um, this custom or situation where everybody knows their place? It may be that people are trying to move between classes, uh, you know, from lower middle to middle, for example. This is possible, maybe through a job, through marriage, through, through some luck inheriting money or something. When I do this in Poland, people say, no, we haven't got the class. We haven't got a particular class. So, thanks for coming, T-Team27. Uh, we're talking about Englishness, so these are some words that really uh, that really sum up English people. Hi there, thanks for joining. Tell me if there are any new words here. The first line is is very uh, critical to understanding English people. Shame. Why do we feel this shame? English people feel a lot of shame. Embarrassment as well. Uh, number 22. I say, say this to my students here that English people feel embarrassed a lot of the time. In many situations, even here when I'm in Poland, I, I lived here, I've lived here for a long time, I still feel embarrassed if I need to phone somebody like a plumber or builder. I can speak a, a little bit of Polish, but I'm embarrassed, I don't want to do it. I feel nervous, anxious. Uh, are you embarrassed in your culture? Yeah. It's like the saying, uh, we're not, we're not comfortable in our own skin. In our own skins. English people are embarrassed, so this means sometimes we don't do things uh, the way you would that you would do them. 
we do it indirectly. You know, if somebody invites us to a party and we don't want to go, what would you do? Maybe would you would say, no, I don't want to go. We're too embarrassed. We say, oh, uh, I'll let you know. I'm not sure about that date. Uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to come. I'll text you. I'll text you. I'll let you know. <laughs> we feel embarrassed. And so to avoid this, we go, uh, we do a lot of strange things to avoid the embarrassment. Well, it might be better just to be direct. Okay, any more things on the list that, that you don't know? We, we can see, uh, we looked at tutting, embarrassment, multiculturalism. England is a multicultural nation. Yeah, around 15% of people living in England are from different countries, from different cultures. What about in your country? Do you have this, uh, this sort of thing? Multiculturalism. Yeah. Here in Poland, it's very different. Uh, it's very unusual to see somebody uh, who isn't white, for example, or someone from a different culture. I'm I'm from a different culture, uh, but people accept me because I'm I fit in. You know, I I generally blend in. We can see some of the things we're talking about: hidden feelings. We hide our true feelings. Some people think we're two-faced. Do you think that about English people? They're two-faced. We don't say what they mean. This is to avoid embarrassment. Um, if we don't like somebody, we'll still be nice to them. We'll still be nice. We'll keep good faith. We'll keep uh, a good uh, good face with that. Try to keep on the good side of somebody, but behind their back, oh dear, we can uh, talk about them, gossip. But when they can't hear us, yes, two-faced. Some people can't understand it. Why we're like that? Yes, Natalia is saying Poland isn't as multicultural as England, but there are more and more people from other countries coming here. Yes. Yes, but generally we see only white people, certainly in the smaller towns and, and villages. Stiff upper lip. Have you heard this expression? about English people, we keep a stiff upper lip. We don't show emotion. We're not, we're not full of emotions, oh, happy, sad. You know, at the funeral in England, everybody's trying to keep, keep from crying, you know, everyone trying to keep a stiff upper lip. Because we're embarrassed. We don't want to show our feelings. We feel embarrassed. In other cultures, they're weeping and wailing and screaming, crying. English people don't want to do that. We want to look like we're controlled and calm. And you know, sometimes we, we have a tear, one tear. Looks like we're cold. So to other other countries, we can look a bit cold. Uh, so we use humour, a lot of humour, to try to cover this lack of emotion or lack of feelings, lack of true uh, speaking truly what we mean. We use a lot of humour, English humour is very famous around the world. 
Uh, just, just to remind you, if you want to speak in the class, please, uh, please tell me in the chat box, and I can give you the microphone. So it's not just a monologue. It can be. I don't mind. <laughs> But if you want to speak and have and say something, you're welcome. Yeah, you're very welcome. Or type in the chat box. But this is discussion, intermediate discussion. Of course, we're going to look at, uh, we're looking at vocabulary as well. Culture in this lesson. Uh, understatement is very important for, to understanding us. If you get a good job, you get the best job, you get a wonderful job. Uh, your friends are saying, oh, well done, congratulations. Oh, you know, it was nothing. It was nothing. Nothing! But this is your dream job, this is what you've been, you've been dreaming about doing. For years, well, it's nothing, you know. It's it's good, but it's it's going to mean a bit of a longer journey to work, and it's not really it's not the salary that I wanted. But but everything has to be negative. Understatement, because we don't want to show off. We don't want to stand up and uh, look different from other people. Yeah, Natalia is saying that's why Natalia's students find it difficult to feel free to speak in England. Yeah. Or to speak English. English people are not confident. Maybe you had a, a teacher who's American from, from the USA. This, this, uh, this, these people are very different from us. They're very confident, they're absolutely uh, happy to talk about themselves and, and their achievements and so on. English people find it a bit like, oh, he's a bit big-headed. We don't like to uh, stand up and be counted. We want to just uh, keep quiet, keep our head down. We're embarrassed. We are embarrassed a lot of the time. So this is maybe the key word. Yeah. The key word in the whole thing. Embarrassment or shame. Uh, we, can, we can talk about why, why it's like that. Is it just a national characteristic? Of course, some English people are different, and they want to uh, they want to put themselves forward. They want to look good. They want to be cool, great. Maybe some film stars or musicians. They're full of confidence. Fine, but this is not true of of the majority of us. Since I I started studying this topic and making this material. I started to catch myself doing this, and I could hear myself saying things like, oh, it's, it's nothing, it's, it's not bad, it's okay. Did you have a nice birthday? No, no, it's okay. It was really good, it was fantastic, it was wonderful, it was amazing. No, it was okay, it was fine, yeah, it was quite good, quite good. <laughs> English people are serious as uh, T twenty seven. Yeah, we are serious. American people are cool. You're saying as well. Yeah, maybe they they are cool, cooler than us. They've got uh, they understand that they've got pride in their country. They've got pride in their, in themselves. Yeah, English people are embarrassed about this. We hide our achievements. 
We don't put our certificates on the wall in the living room of our house. Yeah. Okay, what else can we look at here? Of course, irony is connected with humor. We use irony. We don't say what we mean. Maybe you had a really bad uh, meeting with your boss and it, your friend asked you, how, how was it? Fantastic. Fantastic. So it's irony. It's not true. It doesn't, um, it, it's not saying what he means. If you go to England, you'll hear this time and again. You may be confused, like, why are people talking like this? We're embarrassed to show uh, ourselves as different. So, T use of asking, is there any difference between the English, Scottish and Welsh? So, this lesson is about Englishness, English people. England is the largest country in the UK. Of course, there's Scotland, it's about 5 million people. Uh, Northern Ireland, maybe 1 million. Wales, about 1 million. So England, I don't know, it's maybe 50 or 55, 60 million people. England is the biggest country. I'm not going to be an, an expert in uh, Scottish culture or Welsh culture. Certainly when I've been to Scotland, the people tended to be rather self-confident, yes, compared to me, compared to, to my friends and people I knew in England. But when I, you know, in Scotland it's a wonderful country and they've got a lot to be happy about, especially the mountains and the, and the islands, beautiful. But in Wales, when I lived in Wales, people tended to be even more embarrassed than English people. So again, it's a stereotype. You know, but certainly I can say from this lesson comes from my experience as an English person. It's so different in Poland. The culture is so different. People are direct. They say what they mean. They, they ask direct questions. You know, Matt, are you going to work for us this year? Uh, please, can you ask me by email? I would like to hide behind email and reply in text if that's all right. No, they just come out with it. They say what they what they think, what they mean. The language is direct. If they if they want you to do something, they just say just do it. Open the door, pick up the book, go out. Of course, in England with will say, could you, uh, can you, could, uh, would you mind, is it possible for you, uh, would you be able to? Imagine you, you need a lift home, um, you're speaking to your dad, yeah, let's say, and you need a lift home from somewhere late at night. Uh, I've heard it here, for example, in Poland, Pick me up later. Pick me up. But just direct, uh, imperative form. But an English person asking their father or dad, uh, dad, what? Uh, you know, later on, yes. Uh, would you be, would you mind, uh, would you be able to pick me up later on? Yes. So totally different, the language, the culture. Um, what about your culture? Do you have this? Do you have, are you direct? Why can't we be direct and say what we want? We're embarrassed to our bones about it. I don't know why, unless it's just through, handed down through the culture, from, you know, from family to family. 
So Titi in 27, his, he or she is saying, uh, English people eat meat and vegetables. I eat the meat and vegetables together. So I don't know if it's a metaphor, a metaphor for something, or literally. Yeah. But yes, that might be a difference. Natalia is saying it depends on the level and students. So, it's been a good education for me to live here in a different country and to see people going about their business totally differently to how, how I would do it. I would do it the long way, difficult way, indirectly. They just got doing it and they're not bothered what happened. <laughs> So, of course, we could write a dissertation about this, why it's like that, I suppose. Okay. I'm trying to get to the top. And there are other things here we didn't, we didn't really have time to look at. Fair play. English people are known for this. Because we don't want people to think badly of us. Even our enemy, we want to be on, you know, to keep good face, to be on good terms with them. The BBC is very famous, of course. BBC spreads a lot of English culture around the world and helps to shape this, uh, the impression of English, English net. Yeah. English people look uncomfortable on the dance floor, says so TT27. Yeah, we're, we're embarrassed. We don't, don't want to look silly. We don't want to look different. Of course, it's general stereotype of, of people, but I can relate to this so much, and it helps me understand my own behavior when I, when I learn about this. And then I try to overcome it. Uh, even today in my life, I had this lesson here uh, a few hours ago, an individual lesson with a new student, a young uh, teenager. And she came to the lesson. And at the end of the lesson, I looked her straight in the eye. I said, are you satisfied? Did you enjoy the lesson? Yes! Yes! Are you happy? Yes! And these sort of direct questions that I, are things I would never ask usually. It's not in my character. I would just prefer to die with her on the floor, with her away, than to ask this. But I'm asking them, are you, are you happy with the lesson? Is it you know, they're paying for this privately. Are you satisfied? And they're saying, yes. But this is so un-English, it's so um, embarrassing, really, to ask. <laughs> Why do you feel more ashamed than the Poles? Asked Natalia. You know, this is our natural instinct, if you like. I suppose it comes from our parents, it, it's handed down generation by generation. Maybe over time it will change. Not all English people are nervous and, and embarrassed. But often we are. We don't like, we don't like to look like we're rude or we don't like to upset people. Yeah, it just comes down. Why, we can ask why are Polish people more direct and more straight to the point? Uh, I try to be like that now when I live here. English people will stand in a queue, one behind each other, waiting for something, waiting for a bus or at the theatre, Polish people will gather round in a group, sort of in a huddle. They still know there's a queue. They're not trying to 
to push push themselves and make themselves first, but they will push in the crew, yeah. Then I try to do that as well. I try to do it. It goes against my uh, my instinct to do it. Okay, this page is available on WizIQ if you want to download it. You can get it. It's all these words. If you're using talk a lot lessons, uh, you can use these. Cut up the cards, cut up all these little cards, and use them as discussion card, discussion words with students. You can do things like uh, talk about a word on the card and the other people guess, guess what it is. Of course, there are mil millions of things you can do with this. Uh, next, the next page as well is also available on with IQ. This is an activity. Are you English? So this is a quiz. You can find out whether you are English. Uh, T. Yusuf saying, how do you contrast this with arrogance? Uh, so th this is what what I, as an English person, I want to avoid. I don't want to look arrogant. I don't want to look, uh, put my head up and have people look at me and talk about me and say, oh, you, he's like that, or he's this, he's that. Yeah. Uh, we don't like arrogance. But it's very complicated because, uh, if we don't do things directly, we do them indirectly. Then it becomes hard because some people uh, are affected by what we do. Some people think uh, maybe we're talking about them behind their backs, and it's everything is is confusing. But no, we want to avoid arrogance. I don't want to stand up and say, you know, I'm the best English teacher in the world. I'm the best there. I'm doing this and that. I'm going to university and studying this and that. We keep it to ourselves. Keep it, keep it locked. Keep it hidden. Again, we might contrast with American English. Uh, is it is it in the history? Is it from something in the past? Something that's making us feel like this, deeply ashamed or embarrassed about uh, who we are? I don't know. You know, if I if I was at school in the 19th century when there was the empire, British Empire, and the sun never set on our empire. And there was, of course, India and Canada and Australia and African colonies and this and that. Maybe at school we would be taught what what a brilliant nation we are. Maybe we would be more confident. Our parents would be proud, you know, we we're the best country in the world. For example, yeah, this is not my opinion. But now, maybe this burden, this history, has fallen on us completely, and we're taught differently, and we're taught uh, we're not the greatest, and we've got these problems, and this problem, and this and that. It's a complicated question. We, I'm sure you could, you could write a dissertation about this. <laughs> so these are the these are some situations you know you can work out how you English. When I tried it with some Polish students, some of them felt like they were more English than Polish because they agreed with they would do things uh, the way English people would, and that's fine, you know. So it's a question: What would you do? when and what would an English person do when and this is for discussion so it's really good you can have use this with the students if, if you're a teacher 
If you're a student, use it with your colleagues. What would you do when you take a taxi? What would you do? Uh, type in the chat box. You know, this is a, a social situation. Um, for example, when I get in a taxi, I feel embarrassed. I feel absolutely embarrassed. Why? Because I don't know why. Why is this person driving me around like he's my chauffeur? I'm, I'm embarrassed about it. Why is he, why is it his job to take me somewhere? Now this is really, uh, it's not a good job really, is it? It's a hard, uh, unrewarding kind of job. I feel embarrassed that he's got to do it. For me. No. Yeah. I feel embarrassed because do I, should I speak to him? Maybe he's a different class to me. What should I talk about? And then there's a silence. A long silence. And then I've got to pay, I don't know how much it's going to be. Should I haggle with him and say, oh, can it be a bit less? No, I'm too embarrassed to do that. <laughs> even this simple, uh, even this Simple situation. Yes, I, of course, I remember Bridget. How can I forget? But even this simple situation, it's really a minefield for English people. Of course, some people are not bothered. They do their natural, they do what comes naturally to them. No. Yeah. But this is why you see the characters in the films, like the the Hugh Grant kind of characters in these films. Absolutely stumbling and bumbling. I don't know what to say in the taxi, should I? What should I say? How are you? Have you had a good day? Have you, have you had a lot of customers? I'm embarrassed because it's kind of, he's doing me a service, which I don't know, it has such a low status, but I'm almost embarrassed to do it, to be there, and I, you know, I wish I would, could disappear from the situation. What would you do? What, what about in your culture? Do you jump in? Hi! Where are you going? Hi, take me, please take me to the station. No, not please, just take me. Hey, station. Oh. Busy day. Or maybe you just switch on your phone. Phone somebody and then you don't have this embarrassing silence. Natalia says, I usually speak freely. Absolutely good. But I don't want to say anything about myself. I'm embarrassed. I don't want to. <laughs> what about the next one? You, you're at the hairdressers and your hairdresser doesn't do a good job. What do you say then? What would you do? No, for ladies, it's, it's very important for guys, you know, my hairdresser just takes the, the clippers, shaves it off, and it's probably fine. What about if you're at the hairdressers and your hairdresser makes a mess? Maybe it's a new one. Yeah, T. Yusuf said, I will tell them how I want it done. 15, 27, next I will change and I don't give a tip. And then to Yusuf will complain after that. 
So what would an English person do? What would an English person do in this situation? Of course, th these are stereotypes. Everybody's different. But uh, we don't like to complain. Maybe we would just say, uh, OK, thank you. Thanks a lot. Pay them and then remember them. Never, ever, ever book this hairdresser again. And also tell all your friends about them to avoid them. So everything is hidden, everything is it's in the in the background. If we told them complaint we might not have to pay even. Or they might learn something like, Well why didn't you like that? And they might change it. But we're so embarrassed. Let's look at another one, just for example. There's also uh, a list here. What would you say? What would you say? And what would an English person say? And it's fun to do. There's also an answer page for this. There's answers. Suggested answers. What would you say when an in you're on a bus, a busy bus or train, and a stranger touches you? For example, on the arm, on the shoulder. I'm talking about an accidental touch. But physical contact with somebody. What do you mind that? What, what would you say? <laughs> This can happen in the in the busy place, you know, uh, or maybe you you'd be angry and you would say, "Hey, mind what you're doing. What are you doing?" Hmm. I'm not talking about anything funny, any funny business. I mean just somebody is touching you on the shoulder or arm. In the public play. <laughs> Titine27 said, If he is handsome, I will say, Nice to meet you. Okay. T. Yusuf said, I look at him if he apologizes. No, an English person would say, Sorry. Sorry. Even when it's somebody else doing that. Our first instinct is to apologize for ourselves. Yeah. Our first instinct is to be polite. Why? To avoid any uncomfortable situation. To avoid the feeling of embarrassment or shame. We'll be polite. We'll be polite. We'll uh, say, oh, sorry. <laughs> Number two, you're in a shop. You hand, you give your your goods to the cashier, and they're going to scan it. What do you say? Do you say anything? English supermarkets are really different from here in Poland. Here in Poland. You can uh, go to the supermarket. You don't need to speak to the cashier. They just uh, quiet and quite grumpy. And then you go, you leave. It's like they are almost like they're a robot doing this job. What would an English person do? Say, thank you. You're giving your Shopping to the cashier, thank you. And then they say, thank you. And then you give the money and you say, thank you. And they say, thank you. And uh, then they, they give you the receipt and you say, thank you. And then they, they say, 
oh, you're welcome, have a, have a good day, or something like this. And there's so many polite expressions in one short uh, meeting. <laughs> <coughs> Why? Because we want to, to keep a false, kind of false face, we want to keep a friendly face with this person. Even though it's a stranger, we, we've never met them, we might never meet them again. Thank you. You're welcome. If you go to the north of England, it gets even nicer because they will say, uh, I'm talking about ladies here, will say things like, you're welcome, love, love. You're welcome, duck, me duck. Really nice and, you know, nice, you get a nice feeling. Here, I'm, I'm lucky if anybody says, hello, me dobre, dobre then, yeah. goodbye. In England, here you are, me duck. Anything else you want, you want it? Just cheerful. I don't know why they're so cheerful. It's curious. No, I worked in. I've worked in supermarkets. I've worked on the till, and I. I have to say, it's mu the time goes quicker when you're polite, when you're friendly, if you're chatting to people. You know, if you if you find a customer who's got a load of. Uh, charcoal briquettes and things ready for a barbecue. You might have a chat and say, Oh, are you having a are you having a barbecue at the weekend? Yes, if the weather's good. Oh that's great. Hope oh I hope it goes well. No, I hope it goes well. I hope a stranger's barbecue goes well. It doesn't make sense, does it? Why would I say that even? I don't know. It just it makes the time go quicker. We have a friendly atmosphere, feeling. You know, it doesn't. Maybe I do mean it. I do hope it goes well. But it's a bit nicer than just ignoring the person sitting there in an angry world of my own. Yeah, you know, this kind of language really helps us. To, uh, to communicate. Okay, so we're coming to the end of our discussion. We didn't uh, hear anybody else's voice, but maybe in the next lesson we will have some confident people. Maybe everybody's English here and very shy and nervous, or like English. <laughs> So you can try this uh, this activity either with a colleague or with the class, and you have to count how many times your answer matched the English person's answer. If it's one to five, for example, you're not English, definitely not. Six to ten times there are some English characteristics, and so on. You know and if you've got, if you match 20 times, like I would, then it says you are English. Definitely. Okay, and if so, <laughs> we're going to finish, I think. Any more questions about it? Uh, here at the end. I'm going to put this lesson onto YouTube. It's also available on this uh, on with IQ to download and keep forever. You can enjoy enjoy it as often as you like. So thanks a lot for coming today and next week we'll have a different topic in our lesson. And so mm -hmm. he used have said it's very Important lesson for me. Thank you. I'm not being English. <laughs> yeah, so you mean it from the from the bottom of your heart. Thanks a lot. It's good to see. <laughs> uh, thanks, Natalia. 
Thank you, Bridget. It's always nice to see you. And uh, next time, uh, hope we can get some some more discussion. But we'll see you in the next class. Thank you. Bye bye.